One of the ways that we convince ourselves today that we are important and that our lives matter is to be busy. In fact, when you ask someone how they're doing, many say, really good, just busy, or something like, I'm just so busy. And I'd be lying if I didn't say, I too often say this. In the fast-paced time that we live, it's hard not to be. Everything around us says, if you aren't doing a bunch of things, if you aren't putting in the time, if you aren't climbing the ladder, your life isn't that valuable. We've equated the word busyness with the word importance. But now, the world has come to a halt in many ways, and our calendars have cleared up, trips that we had planned for months are canceled, and it appears life as we know it will change. And we don't know what to do with the time that we have. But if we're not careful, we'll just find more ways to be busy. We've all seen the copious amounts of activities we could or should be doing during this quarantine. There are workout regimens, there are ways to better ourselves, books we have to read, tours of museums that we have to do virtually, courses we must take online, and the list goes on. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for healthy habits and taking great opportunities, but I would argue that we have no idea how to rest and be still. We're too afraid to stop because we think our lives will have no value if we do. And it's an exhausting, vicious cycle. But this isn't a new thing. It just wears a different mask in our time. God knew from the beginning of creation that you and I would struggle to stop, rest, and be still. And so he put measures in place for our good and our benefit. And this is the discipline of rest. In Genesis 2.2, it says, On the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested. I'll be honest, as a kid, I never understood this verse. It made no sense to me. I saw resting in naps as weakness. I know foolishness is in the heart of a child, but I thought God was this never-ending source of power. He doesn't need to rest or take naps. Was creating the cosmos too tiring for him? If not, why did he rest? Well, last year, I was going for a run outside with my 11-year-old nephew. And as we started to run, I could tell he was getting exhausted, but he was determined to keep up with his uncle, and nothing was going to stop him. At one point, I could tell this wasn't going to end well for my nephew. So I stopped running and I pretended that I was exhausted. And I said, man, I need a break. And he gave such a sigh of relief and said, yeah, yeah, I'll take a break too. He thought I did it for my sake, but I wasn't tired. I did it for his sake. God didn't need to take a break, but he was modeling a deep truth for us to live by. You and I are finite beings. We have limitations. And if we're not diligent to rest, we will push ourselves to exhaustion, spiritually, mentally, and even physically. Out of love, God has built into our schedules a time of rest. We even see this part of God's heart in Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Notice it doesn't say he gives me the option of lying down. He makes us lie down for our good. And if we're too busy to take one day a week to rest, we're just too busy. We show just how enslaved we are to busyness when we refuse to take heed his commandments. We reveal that our, our heart, that our true Lord, is often work and not God. Rest cannot just be something we do if we have time. It must be what we do even when we feel like we don't have the time because that's precisely when we need it most. But even more than taking that one day a week of rest, as Christians, we get the immense privilege of starting every single day and a rest for our souls. Every time we get up and we start a prayer with our Father, we are resting in the finished work of Christ on the cross. If we don't realize and hold to this perspective every single day that Christ accomplished all that needed to be accomplished on our behalf to be given right standing with God, then we will operate in a way where we will try to relentlessly earn our salvation through work, money, looks, relationships, prestige, even busyness. Through Christ, we have a rest that satisfies the inner angst of our soul. And just as a mountain glorifies God just by being what God had made it to be, we can start every single day knowing that before we accomplish anything, God says, this is my beloved with whom I, I am well pleased. In the beginning, God rested when he finished. Today, we can now rest because on the cross, Christ cried, it is finished. Let us live in that rest today.